Many were quick to call James Wiseman a bust, but as he displayed with a dominant 20 points in the preseason opener, he's going to be a problem for NBA bench centers to hold in check. Having Wiseman, Moody, Kaminga, DiVincenzo, Baldwin Jr., and Poole all available off the bench gives Golden State young yet stable depth. Here's every reason for why the defending champions opener in Tokyo flashed signs of this team being even better in 22-23. Before continuing, only 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also, leave a like on this video. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. For NBA edits, follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram. Click the link in the description to take you there. Back to the content. Golden State and Washington were extremely rusty in their preseason opener as both teams shot under 37% from the field. The rust is understandable given players aren't only trying to find their flow after 3 plus months off, but are playing on the opposite side of the planet. Specifically, 2022's NBA champions struggled to get a rhythm as the dub starters combined to make an ugly 6 of 34 field goals. Headline of the night was James Wiseman dunking the ball 5 times and competing with the aggressiveness and fluidity that the Warriors expect from him. Washington guards this pick and roll action so well they force Kaminga to lose a shoe and Wiseman to fumble Jonathan's pass, but James swiftly recovers the loose ball away from the diving Gafford and shows off the standing vertical which made him 2020's second overall pick. This time, Wiseman shows off the lob threat he can be, slipping the drag screen and catching the underhanded dime from Steph. Watch the hands and instincts from DiVincenzo to snatch away this loose ball and whip a one-handed bullet to Wiseman who gives Porzingis his Kodak moment. To keep Chris Stapps off balance, James stretches it out for a 17-footer on the right baseline. Here, a split action set resulting in a dribble handoff to Dante, sees Wiseman take up a ton of ground in just two strides on his roll, and DiVincenzo's passing chops set up yet another throwdown. Despite having 12 less years of NBA experience than Taj Gibson, Watch how James takes advantage of Gibson fronting him, and an amazing entry pass from Kaminga makes Gibson look silly. Another fundamental entry pass this time comes from Quindary Witherspoon, but executing this action is Wiseman's ability to transition from a line drive roll to the post, not to mention his extremely polished post hook. It's almost impossible to believe that the quick breakdown of Wiseman's preseason opener we just looked at came after James missed the entirety of 2021-22's NBA season with a meniscus tear in his right knee. I know how much Dubs Nation believes in the 21-year-old and how he could recover to make his presence felt. However, I'm sure the springiness and stamina displayed by Wiseman in his very first action in over a year shocked even the biggest of believers. Regardless, the Warriors' seven-foot locomotive looks extremely mobile after such a significant lower body injury. James didn't only have a game-high 20 points, but he was also a game-high plus 14 while racking up a block and nine rebounds, all in just 24 minutes played. Moses Moody only had five points, but the rising wing was clamping up wizard attackers whenever Steve Kerr subbed him in specifically showing off some eye-popping lateral quickness on this possession, where Moses consecutively shuts down Bradley Beal's step back and spin move. His calm, cool, and collectedness make Moody a favorite among the Golden State Warriors veteran players, as well as the coaching staff, who always know what they're going to get, which is hard-nosed defense and pristine decision-making. Conversely, the Warriors' other 2021 draft pick in Jonathan Kaminga is a bit more unpredictable. Kaminga probably has more upside than Moody with more athleticism, but in terms of IQ and off-court maturity, that's where Moses is ahead of Jonathan at this point. Internal competition is always a positive, but Igudala put it best on Kaminga, saying in a conversation with Dikembe Mutombo, quote, he's good, he's really good, but he's a knucklehead. Igudala was the primary mentor to both Kaminga and Moody during their rookie years, but Kaminga was always Andre's biggest focus. Their lockers are next to each other, and last season, you'd often see Iggy on the sidelines in street clothes, pointing Kaminga in the right direction on defense and yelling encouragement or criticism, constantly giving Jonathan either praise or critique. What an incredible luxury it is for Golden State to get Iguodala back for yet another year of mentoring and even some decent encore production, as Andre's essentially a player coach at this point. 
Iggy may have his foot in Kaminga's behind, but he's got the kid's back as well. When Stephen A. Smith said that Kaminga was shortchanging the Warriors with his lack of focus and poor work ethic last month, Igudala defended his locker room buddy, saying he took some licks from Stephen A. I don't know how warranted they were, because from what I heard, he'd been doing what he's supposed to do this summer. Igudala went on to praise how Kaminga played for his home country, saying Kaminga's getting busy. I mean, fast break, reverse, pull-ups, he's in his bag, isos, getting to it, making shots, end quote. Like the loss of Otto Porter Jr. and Nemanja Bialica, entails that Golden State's young players up front will have to develop. The loss of Gary Payton II means free agent pickup Dante DiVincenzo will have to step up. After putting up 9 points in 17 minutes on 3 of 4 shooting from the field, 2 threes, 2 dimes, and most notably, a hefty 7 rebounds, Dante seems not only capable of filling the young glove shoes, but potentially being better than GP2. When you take into account DiVincenzo's above average defense, plus the fact that he's shown throughout his entire career that he can create looks for your offense off the dribble, an ability Gary Payton, as valuable as he was, wasn't equipped with, and it's a little odd that the mainstream media didn't make a bigger deal over Golden State picking up Dante. Instead, ESPN just predicted the losses of Gary Payton II, Otto Porter Jr., Nemanja Bialica, among others, will result in the Warriors being the 8th seed in the Western Conference this year. Before overreacting, you can't forget that ESPN also gave Golden State a 14% chance to beat the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals, so they've got a history for being wrong about the dubs. While I'm more than thrilled about the Raptors getting Otto Porter, who I can't wait to watch in person by the way, that prediction about Golden State from ESPN is laughable and completely short-sighted. The Warriors' young guns are only just finding their footing in the association, and as the season goes on, expect Wiseman, Kaminga, and Moody to give the dubs an increasingly more intimidating second unit. The prolific weapons off this Golden State Warrior pine will make the Bay Area's team at the very least a top three seed at West. The 6'10 shooting rookie Patrick Baldwin Jr. is a player I didn't heavily break down today, but PBJ adds yet another dangerous body to this dub system. Patrick made two of his four shot attempts, which included a three ball, scoring seven points in the first of two in Tokyo. Who will be the star of Game 2 in the Japan Games? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's Speaks winner is KT who says Tobias Harris is the most overlooked 76er this season. Many consider him as a possible trade piece, but people don't understand that you have a 6'8 wing that's a decent shooter, defender, slash closeout attacker as your fourth option behind Joel, Harden, and Maxi.